Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem to News at 6. I'm Mark Handrahan. We are practicing social distancing here at Krem 2, so I'm broadcasting from my home. Meantime, Whitney Ward's back at the studio. And Whitney, we have made it to Friday. This week felt about a month long. It really <laughs> did. I'm just so glad we made it. It was quite a week. But we made it and we just are thankful for that and thankful to be heading into a weekend. We do have a lot of good coronavirus coverage to get to. So let's get right to our top stories tonight. The CDC now recommending all Americans do wear masks in public. Now, President Trump is stressing this is optional. At this point, is it is just a recommendation. So we want to know right now, what do you think? Are you going to wear a mask in public? Just let us know by weighing in on our Krem2 mobile app. In the meantime, Regina Ahn is standing by in the newsroom right now with more on these new guidelines from the CDC. Regina. Hey, good evening, Whitney. Yeah, the CDC is recommending you cover your face with a cloth cloth mask in places like the grocery store or pharmacy when you're out and about. An important note today, President Trump is not recommending surgical or medical grade masks. Those should be reserved for those on the front lines like doctors, nurses and first responders. But uh, this is voluntary. I don't think I'm going to be doing it, but you have a lot of ways you can look at it as follows. The CDC is recommending that Americans wear a basic cloth or fabric mask that can be either purchased online or simply made at home, probably material that you'd have at home. These face coverings can be easily washed or reused. And we also want to point out that these new masks guidelines do not interfere with the CDC's social distancing guidelines. So this means that staying at home and standing six feet away from people should still be practiced every day. The Surgeon General also says hygiene is very important, especially before putting on those masks. If you choose to wear one, make sure to wash your hands beforehand. And the president today also using the Defense Production Act to ramp up manufacturing of those N95 masks that first responders desperately need. Whitney, back to you. All right, Regina, thank you. So earlier we asked if you were going to wear a mask, a cloth mask, as the president said, the CDC is now recommending. Looks like 68% of you kind of going back and forth in the high 60s saying, yes, you are absolutely willing to do that. 31% of you saying, no, you're not that interested. So thanks for voting and keep those votes coming. We know right now there are nearly 7,000 cases across Washington of the coronavirus. The death toll now standing at 284 four statewide here in Spokane County. There are 194 people who have been diagnosed with the coronavirus and seven fatalities. You can see in Grant County now 68 cases. Okanagan County just reporting tonight. They now have six cases. Across the state line in Idaho, the Panhandle Health District is reporting 37 cases just in Kootenai County, one case in Bonner County. Statewide, the death toll is at nine among 814 total cases. Lowe's says it does have an employee at its Spokane Valley store that has tested positive for coronavirus. In a statement, a spokesperson today said that employee has now been quarantined and is receiving care. The last time that employee worked at that store was on March 17th. The spokesperson said the store was clean following CDC guidelines and that store is now back open for customers. New at 6 tonight, Montana's June 2nd primary election will be conducted only by the mail, of course, in an effort to limit the spread of this virus. Same day registration and voting will still be allowed. There is a new law that could mean election results, though, will be available earlier than usual. The ballots will be mailed on May 8th to all active voters. Some startling reports now claiming that coronavirus is airborne, meaning it could spread just by breathing or talking. But right now, it seems like the experts can't fully agree. So we want to kind of connect the dots for you. Right now, these reports, where are they coming from? Well, CNN says a chairman of a committee with the National Academy of Sciences told the White House Wednesday night multiple studies point to COVID-19 being aerosol aerosolized, which means Infected people could spread the virus simply by talking and breathing, not only by coughing and sneezing. So that news caused officials to start to rethink the recommendations on the general public wearing those face masks. Well, but not everyone agrees with those findings. Turns out the World Health Organization has said there is not sufficient evidence to suggest that the virus is fully airborne. They still believe it is primarily spread through tiny droplets that you cough or sneeze out. The people who study airborne respiratory illnesses say 
Getting solid information could actually take years. And right now, it's just better to err on the side of caution. And remember, for the latest information about this virus here locally and beyond, all you have to do is text the word fax to 509-448-2000, and we will immediately send you a link to your phone or your iPad or your tablet with the latest updates. All right, Mark, amid these coronavirus concerns, authorities in Kootenai County say they're doing whatever they can to make sure the coronavirus doesn't even get in the door of the jail there. That's exactly right. When the officials there say these temporary changes could actually have a couple of benefits. So let's take a look in Coeur d'Alene. That's led to some precautionary changes at the jail. Following an emergency order by Idaho Supreme Court, judges are temporarily not issuing what are called bench warrants for people who don't show up to court. Normally, if someone fails to show up to a hearing, a judge can hand down an order for that person to be arrested on the spot. But now judges will instead issue summonses. They will hopefully mean fewer people being booked into the jail and potentially bringing in the coronavirus with them. That's safer, they say, for both the inmates and the jail staff. I keep hounding on the word safe, um, and that's the biggest thing that we look for in law enforcement is just a safe environment for both inmates and staff. He says the jail might typically have upwards of 400 inmates at the same at a time rather, but as of last week, that count stood at around 325. The court system is also using a special courtroom at the jail for some of their hearings. All right, let's take a step back from the headlines and talk about weather because it has been a wild week. We've seen just about everything. Snow, rain, even a little sunshine right now. Tom Sherry standing by about a mile from me at his home here on the South Hill. And Tom, have you finished your chores so you can at least give us some of the forecast? Uh, today was an, uh, uh, no, no, I haven't, but I can give you the <laughs> forecast, uh, but I will tell you today, you would love this, Mark. Today's an exercise day. Uh, she had me oh, out nice. doing a, uh, a march, uh, and we did, uh, about five miles this morning and we're still continuing to do some exercising throughout the day. And that's not a bad thing. And that's a good thing. That's and good I'm, for and you. I'm totally into it. Right. It is good for me. Exactly. Shall we head over to the Storm Tracker 2 remote weather window? Let's go over here and look at this. It's beginning to clear out now. Yeah, we've got some clouds out there, but at my location here on the South Hill, we've got some blue sky and a little bit of sunshine. So we like that. Let's go to the Doppler radar and we'll show you that we've got showers that are occurring across areas of eastern Washington and northern Idaho. There you can see it right there. Most of the, in northern, in northern Idaho, most of those showers in the form of snow showers. Let's get a closer view in the Spokane, Coeur d'Alene kind of metro area, uh, all the way up towards Priest Lake. So you folks up in Spirit Lake, you're seeing some of that uh, snow shower activity in Sandpoint. It looks like you're getting some snow showers. And then if you head farther south, down towards Worley and Plummer, Idaho, looks like it's mostly rain. And then over in the Silver Valley, it's kind of a combination of rain and snow falling at this time. Uh, we can see the sun though uh, beginning to set. Of course it sets uh, uh, well after seven o'clock tonight so we love that. 43 degrees with winds out of the southwest at 21 miles an hour. That's not a surprise. I told you yesterday we'd get wind gusts up to 35 today. Here we are with the weekend. Saturday is a dry day with a high of 50. Look for a chance of some snow showers late Saturday night, overnight into Sunday. And then I think most of Sunday will be dry, cloudy, and then showers redeveloping about this time uh, on Sunday night, meaning right around the dinner hour. We'll look for a high of 49 degrees. Mark, I've got to look at your 10-day forecast coming up in just about 10 minutes. Back to you. Looking forward to that. Tom Sherry, thank you very much. We'll check in with you later in the show. Well, we wanted to take advantage of some of the moments of nice weather today. So Cram 2's Amanda Rowley and photographer Jeff Bollinger practiced social distancing by talking to some people by phone to ask them about life during a pandemic. So Governor Jay Inslee extended the stay at home order to May 4th. I don't know about you, but I am missing being out in the community, talking to people in our community. So today we are out taking a social distancing approach to checking in with people in the community. So I've put out my number asking people to call me from a distance and let us know how they're getting through these times. Give me a call. Do you mind doing a phone interview with us? Specifically, the last couple of days, what sort of activities are you doing? I've um, been working on my vegetable garden. Garage cleanups and stuff like that. We went up to Stevens Creek and it was awesome. I've gotten in over 100 miles of walking the last two weeks. How have you been able to stay connected with friends and family? Talking to friends over the, you know, over Zoom. Calls and checks in over text, you know. FaceTime. 
time with our family and then lots of group texting and Sunday pictures. And my son's home from Seattle, so it's all good. What is maybe the first thing you guys hope to do once things go back to normal? Uh, where do you hope to go or what's, what's the first thing you want to do? I'm going to go to a restaurant and eat out. <laughs> um, what I would love to do is travel. The very first thing is go out to eat. Nice sit down restaurant and act like normal people. I think the first thing we're going to do is probably go camping. What? Uh, do you have a restaurant in mind? Gordy's Sichuan. A melting pot. We really like being outside. When the weather gets nice, I think that's what we're going to head out to do. Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. It is wild just how quickly life changed with all the uh, social distancing and the stay at home orders. All right, Whitney, question for you. What are you most looking forward to when the stay at home order is lifted? Um, you know, I'll probably, well, the first thing I'll probably do is go over to my mom's house, give her a hug, be thankful mm. that she's safe and healthy because she has, I have basically forbidden her from even leaving her home. So <laughs> she knows she's not allowed to leave. So I will go and give her a hug and, and be thankful for her health. And then just like those That's people mentioned, move. I really do want to go out to a nice restaurant, enjoy just right. the ambiance. I think we all maybe miss that more than we even thought that we would. What do you, what do you we'll miss? We'll never take it for... Yeah, we'll never take going out to a restaurant for dinner for granted again, right? And I'm looking forward to going back to the gym and yeah. seeing my buddies and, I don't know, just, you know, having normal life resume. Exactly. We are social creatures. We're going to check back in with you here, Mark, in just a few minutes, so don't go anywhere. Still